We're now headed to Mongolia with a National Geographic grantee who's working to save rivers and livelihoods. For generations, Mongolian herders have traversed this vast and pristine countryside known as the land of the blue sky. National Geographic emerging explorer, Seska Mukbayer, grew up here, herding yaks along the banks of the Ankh River. Mongolians say we are the children of Father Sky and Mother Earth. I believe this completely. There is nothing more precious than our environment. But others believed Mongolia's gold, copper, and coal were far more precious than its environment. Mining has been a windfall to a country long mired in economic uncertainty. But extracting and processing gold uses up a lot of water and creates extremely toxic waste. The Ankh River used to supply water to 60,000 people and one million head of livestock. But a decade ago, due in large part to gold mining, it ran dry. Tens of thousands of people who depended on the river were forced to move elsewhere. Ten years ago, if I'd been standing right here, the water level would have been above my head. Monk Byers' family and neighbors dug wells to reach the water. But the groundwater was so contaminated that dozens of local children suffered serious liver damage. My own family was affected by the pollution. We faced the tragic loss of my mother, who died because of liver disease when she was just a little over 50. My son was one of the 30 or 40 children who also became ill, and I had this cancer removed from my chin. If I were living in a cleaner environment, none of this would have happened. Monkbeyer mobilized grassroots participation among citizens who previously felt they had no power to shape government policy. We saw that people started to believe that citizen movements can make a difference. When Monkbeyer started his movement, there were 37 active mines along the Ankh River. In seven years, he and his group have shut down 36 mines, but the government continues to issue new permits. Word of his efforts has spread around the world. A group of American, Russian, and Mongolian environmentalists traverses the countryside for a first-hand look at the impact of the gold mining. Among them, National Geographic emerging explorer Zeb Hogan. Why was it important to you to have everyone come together and, and see the situation in Mongolia? Mongolians say instead of hearing something a thousand times, it's better to see it just once. Hogan studies giant freshwater fish, which are fast disappearing. He's worried that the gold mining here is destroying the habitat of the endangered giant Eurasian trout known as the Thai men. The Thai men used to occur in Russia, China, and Mongolia. But because of activities like placer gold mining, Thai men have disappeared from much of their original range. And so now the same thing that has happened in many parts of Russia is happening here in Mongolia gold mining threatening the largest trout species in the world. Monk Beyer and others in the movement work with herder families who depend on the river to sustain themselves and their livestock. The group stops to visit with Sind Ocher, an 82-year-old nomad who's lived along the Tool River her entire life. <laughs> Mining has impacted our lands a lot. I cry seeing how my land has changed. One time I was on top of the mountain with my grandchild, and she asked me, why are you crying, Grandma? And I said, I cry seeing my land. My land has turned into a wounded deer. Ashin Korlu 
also lives in the Tule River Valley in the shadow of Russian mining cranes. Because of the mining operations, the rivers dried up and we drink water from a puddle, water residue. We don't have much pasture land left to herd our animals. This needs to be stopped, but we don't know how. So let's get back to the cars and let's go. But during their 10-day trip, the group also sees positive work being done to mitigate the damage caused by mining. So I see a couple of willows over there. Are those naturally uh, self-planting? One mining company has planted about 100,000 willow tree saplings to help reclaim mined land. Monk Buyers Group has also begun restoration projects along the Auk River, planting bushes that could stop erosion. The bush's sweet yellow berries will also provide income for the local herders. Although more companies are getting licenses to operate along Mongolia's rivers, Monk Buyer is still optimistic that with international assistance, his group and others like it can stop destructive mining practices. During the last eight years, we've been trying to save our river and our water, but in the overall picture, we're not succeeding. We can't stop all the mining operations, and we need to cooperate with international organizations. Fighting together, we will bring a result. For many Mongolians, this beautiful landscape is just as precious as gold. <laughs>